And so, to the next instalment of the story, framed like all sequels by what's preceded it, the glory, the failures, and pretty much everything in between. The high, the lows, the 56 years of hurt. The last chance have brought the nearest of near misses on the most agonizing and gut-wrenching of Wembley summer nights. The cruelest of endings to a wonderful journey. But now the page is turned. And the calm before the sandstorm ends here. The waiting over. And as it starts, you can afford yourself that hope. No matter how battle-scarred you may be by previous crushing conclusions. Hope prevalent that the longest, most interminable wait of them all will also finally end with a glorious moment unparalleled in the lifespan of many England fans that the oasis will be found in this desert on the banks of the Persian Gulf. And these are the moments that will be forever remembered, whether they captivate or exasperate. These tournament games are ones that become indelibly etched on the psyche. Close your eyes and you can visualize those that have shaped the past. Hurst and Moore, Banks from Pele, the hand of God, Gaza's tears, penalties, Owen's fearlessness of youth, more penalties, Ronaldinho, the ghost goal, Colombia, and Croatian heartbreak. On field impulses and split second decisions that immediately become reference points for future generations. And now the snapshot images of tomorrow will be born in matches that will live on forever, for better, for worse, where reputations can be made and heroes forged as the latest crop of three lions pen their own instalment of this absorbing World Cup tale. And this is how England line up for the first game of the 2022 World Cup. Pickford in goal, Trippier, Stones, Maguire and Shaw, Rice, Bellingham and Mount, Saka, Kane, Sterling. On the bench, Walker, Dyer, Cody, Alexander, Arnold and White, Henderson, Phillips, Foden, Gallagher, Grealish, Rashford, Wilson, Pope and Ramsdale. Iran, Bayram van den Gaal, Sadek, Maharami at right back, Peraliganji, Hosseini and Milad Maharami. Niralahi, Cheshmi and Hashtafi, Yahambash, Taremi and Karimi. And the referee is Rafael Klaus from Brazil who takes charge of his first World Cup game. And before the game starts, England players take the knee. A visual and symbolic reminder of their stance against discrimination and that there is no room for racism. With a three-line stand where they've stood so often before, seven games away from glory, hoping this is the first step towards footballing immortality. Their 2022 World Cup campaign is underway, so sit back and let the history unfold. Alongside me, for World Cup semi-finalist Stuart Pearce. Good afternoon to you, Stu. It is, as we thought it might be, a back five for Iran. Something they haven't done in an international for at least five years. Yeah, quite understandable, I think, the magnitude of the game and the task they're facing against England, the favourites to win the group. Uh, they'll want to come away with something from this, this game if they possibly can. And obviously decided to deploy that five man at the back. I think it's really important England move the ball nice and quickly, try and get it from side to side and get some one-on-ones if possible. England, white shirts, star blue shorts, they're kicking from left to right, Iran in all red with some white trim. And the ball laid back by Stones for Maguire, who will bring forward over the halfway line, 15 yards into Iranian territory. Play it out towards Luke Shaw. Shaw back for Declan Rice. And down inside the centre circle again for Stones, so Trippier had made an early run forward to the right-hand side of the penalty area, but it's laid back instead for Jude Bellingham, right, becoming the first teenager to play for England at both the Euros and the World Cup, while still a teenager. Trippier, back for Bellingham again, wearing 22, quick exchange of passes between him and Saka, and England with all the possession inside the opening couple of minutes. Reigns haven't had a worthwhile kick as yet just getting an early feel for it now Bellingham looking to switch it long ball over the top from him for Trippier right footed ball inside the penalty area headed away cleared out only as far as Bellingham again just outside the edge of the D Rice back for Kieran Trippier whose ball forward is deflected opportunity to try working inside the penalty area is passed up by Mason Mount who lets it run out of play for England's first corner Whilst England are going to have great opportunities to keep the ball at the back and move it from side 
side to side. They cannot turn the opportunity down of going forward every opportunity they possibly can. And to do that, they're going to have to get both our fullbacks near enough level with Harry Kane on, on that line across there, as high as they humanly can. It's Kieran Trippier that goes across to take the corner. There are two inside the six-yard box. Kane waits on the edge of the six, and then three more in a line on the edge of the penalty area, waiting to make runs to attack this. Including Maguire, who's trying to get free towards the back post. Plenty of holding going on. Stones was wrestled to the ground. There's a big appeal. Both Stones and Maguire went to ground. And it is something that the VAR directive, as we understand it, is that there are going to be That's a big inquests. It should be a penalty because cheshwi has got his arms around Maguire. It's a penalty. And as play it will be a penalty. restarts, the referee then puts whistle to mouth and says, just wait, they're having a look at the incident. Now it is Leonard and Gonzalez from Uruguay, who is the VAR. Stones ended up on the deck. Cheshmi had no interest in the ball. All he was trying to do was lean into Maguire and stop him making a run towards the ball. That's two penalties, really. I think there's a, a penalty both Stones and Maguire were fouled. He's given a goal kick here, which is a disgraceful decision. I always like to back referees, but that is a penalty, I'm afraid to say. OK, so the bar is now set for the tournament. So if that is an incident that is always passed up, that's fine. But it won't be. I wouldn't imagine. It's a really, really poor decision in the game, I think. Four minutes in and already controversy. But a good start from England. And I would suggest on the back of that, they need to get as many set pieces as they can. The ball is in the hands of the experienced goalkeeper, Ali Reza Baron Van, to save Ronaldo's penalty against Portugal in the last World Cup. He's got a spectacular long throw. He didn't see him then. And he just tried to drill the ball forward into the left wing position for the Iranians. They went straight out of play for a throw, which has been taken quickly. Trippy with a slightly loose ball across the midfield, which was still fielded by Maguire. And now Declan Rice has it. 20 yards inside his own half, he's played it for for Stones. Stones has got Saka on the uh, right flank. Bellingham making a good run forward for him. Saka just plays the way that he's facing. Goes back for Stones again. Stones to Maguire and Trippier waiting for the ball out on the left we'll get an official possession statistic in a, a few minutes time I would imagine it's in the mid 80s if not higher than that for England on the uh, strength of what we've seen so far it's one way traffic but the Iranians play this way a low block with an eye on fast counters playing with a 5-1-3-1 formation here so plenty of bodies back behind the ball and they'll do everything they can to turn over possession and get it into the feet of uh, Taramine and try and get him having a run in between Stones and Maguire but at the moment it's been easy for England who will try and get the ball between the lines again out towards Luke Shaw left wing cross comes in for him Saka at the far post couldn't get there steered away Rice couldn't pick up the pieces around the edge of the penalty area but England maintained the ball inside Iranian territory and Stones will play it for for Trippier again. Trippier's ball uh, deflecting off Milad Maharami, the left back. Saka chasing after it and hassling Karimi. He'll take it down towards his own dead ball and in the end turns it away, trying to buy the throw. He didn't. He didn't take a deflection off the guy of Saka and England have a throw about 10 yards from the quarter flag. Good, bright, promising start. Six minutes in on top sport, it's nil-nil. Yeah, I was just going to make that point. I think it's been a really good start for England. Plenty of possession on the ball, but they're not just playing possession football. They are looking to probe, get it forward. But the big thing for me is our fullbacks. They've got to get very, very high as early as they can and give that option for diagonal balls to wide areas. They're the ones with a little bit of space at the moment. Well, the uh, possession is 91-9 in England's favour at the moment, but now it's been turned over, although Sack has been fouled. And Rafael Klaus, the uh, Brazilian referee, has given England a free kick. We feel that he and his VAR colleagues should have given England a penalty for some wrestling going on as England uh, attacked a corner three or four minutes into the game. But he has blown in England's favour here, a free kick that Trippier will take. That's much nearer halfway than the edge of the penalty area. Yeah, I think this is the thing that frustrates the life out of me. 
as the uh, free kick is taken short and intelligently and Kane whips it in and coming in at the back post well, there's no chance for Harry Maguire to be able to get a touch from a very tight angle to turn the goal down and there's been a collision between the Iranian goalkeeper and defender inside the six yard box and both Bayramban and Hosseini are going to need a little bit of treatment here good free kick though yeah top quality there trip here identifying Kane's movement just out wide and he's crossing the goalkeeper's just got a touch on it as it flashed across the face of the six yard box and that was just enough to take it away from Raheem Sterling who had a, a simple header from about five yards otherwise great start from England really good the point I was making earlier about the VAR I think if a referee there's a skirmish in the box and you, there is no VAR you think well the referee's not seen it when we've seen the pictures that we have Jim it, it's physically impossible to think there's not a penalty there because the Iranian defender literally he had his arms wrapped around Maguire his hands were, were wrapped around and locked on the other side of Maguire's waist so and then brought him to the ground it, it, it astounds me well as he's always talked about it is the the observation of a, a clear and obvious error is what they're looking for and that surely was a clear and obvious error I can understand that the referee can't look everywhere he's naturally going to follow the flight of the ball as it comes in but that to my mind is the type of incident that VAR was invented for and is uh, probably let England down there but as I mentioned at the time it's uh, talking about consistency and I have to make sure that that incident is going to be ignored throughout the course of the tournament. He's still not missing anything because of the uh, continuation of treatment for uh, Ali Reza Behravan, the uh, Iranian goalkeeper. So let me remind you that coming up tomorrow morning, Talk Sport Breakfast, live from Qatar with Laura Woods and Ali McCoist. Gabby Agbon Lahore, part of our team, of course. Former England striker off the back of the three lines opener today with them between seven and nine tomorrow. But Laura and Ali starting at six. Followed, of course, by the magnificent White and Jordan. Uh, join Jim and Simon live from Qatar tomorrow morning between 10 and 12. And then a small matter of three games back to back live on Talk Sport. Denmark, Tunisia from one. Mexico, Poland from four. France against Australia from seven and we'll also bring you the opening game tomorrow Argentina against Saudi Arabia that kicks off at 10 o'clock your time that's live on Talk Sport 2 and that is also live tomorrow we've got all 64 games from the tournament on the Talk Sport network amongst 450 that we will bring you over the course of the season including the other game in this group later today USA against Wales with Dean Saunders alongside Nigel Adley it's a 7 p.m. kickoff here on Talk Sport and Senegal against Netherlands is on Talk Sport 2 a 4 o'clock kickoff here on Talk Sport as always bring your choice of listening and you'll be able to hear the fallout to this England performance this England result whatever happens we're ten and a half minutes in probably only seen about six minutes of action so far Carlos Cuerras I think will be quite glad for this uh, break because his side will be able to try and work out how they're going to get a touch of the ball they are warming up the substitute goalkeeper Hossin Hossini who's yet to make his competitive debut that's got seven caps behind him he's out warming up at the moment they a band that's still down receiving treatment just outside the six yard box yeah I think he got quite a blow on his nose there's some blood coming obviously from his nose and uh, I'm not sure whether he went into the game with a slightly crooked snout but he certainly got one now yeah everybody needs a, a, a reminder of the tournaments that they played in don't they he's got one now <laughs> I hope you're looking beyond me to deck I, I, really can't, do. I can't see past your nose to be honest no, let's, no, let's no, go no. down pitch side behind the goal and talk sports England and correspondent Faker others is down there Faker you've got eyes on Gareth Southgate for where you are yeah he's just spent quite a long time having a conflab with a number of his players including quite a long one with John Stones and Harry Maguire no doubt saying okay if that's the case uh, and this blocking that I talked to Gareth Southgate about yesterday isn't going to be implemented like this let's, let's use it to our advantage uh, Jordan Pickford just having a chat with Kieran Tripp here at the moment and have taken some swigs of his water bottle as well but obviously the players just need to try and keep themselves warm maybe take on a little bit more direction from the coaching team which they are 
Now that's a good point actually about the, the blocking, it's something that Mark Plattenberg was talking about yesterday, saying that the referees were under FIFA orders to block the blockers. Now, that been the other way round. And if that had been John Stones or Harry Maguire wrestling one of the Iranian defenders to stop him being able to mark Harry Kane, say, coming in, then a free kick is going to be given to the defending side. So that's where you need the consistency. And I know we're banging on about it whilst this uh, treatment continues, but uh, it is... Uh a ludicrous decision really not to award a penalty for what we saw Jim there's no excuse with TV cameras that's what VAR was brought in for so people can have a look at it in varying angles and make a decision away from the intensity of the pitch that the referee might miss which is fine but they've certainly not even gone to the referee and asked him to have a look at that I'm surprised at that well Baron Vand the Iranian goalkeeper is back on his feet uh, He's trying to walk towards his goal. He's got his captain, Hatch Safi, he's got a bottle of water in his hand, physically throwing water at him. Uh, I would suggest to a very untrained medical eye that he is a study in concussion, but I don't know. Uh, we'll find out whether they're going to let him continue or not. And Hossein, Hossein e continues to warm up. He is actually one of three substitute Iranian goalkeepers today. Uh, Kleros has uh, named only a 25-man squad and there are four keepers in there. He's taken his shirt off and is putting another shirt on. So that indicates he's going to be okay. There's obviously a little bit of blood on the first shirt and as a consequence he has to change it. Uh, but that would suggest they're, they're going to change his shorts as well. That would suggest that he is uh, going to be able to continue for now certainly but we're 13 minutes into a contest which has probably seen six or seven minutes of action so far there's going to be a lengthy period of stoppage time so from an England point of view when you've had such a good start and you build up the momentum and you then get a long stoppage like this how do you deal with it um, well from a conditioning point of view you've got to make sure that the players are keeping on the move keeping fresh keeping mentally fresh as much as anything I was just going to go on from a te technical point of view. I think Jude Bellingham has very, been be very bright in the early stages, wanting to get on the ball, wanting to get touches of the ball. I always find with Deck as well, when plays easy and the defenders, centre-halves have got the ball having worked with Deck, sometimes he comes a little bit too deep beyond the striker to come and get a feel of the ball. That's when, as a holding midfield player, you need to keep your discipline, stay up the pitch and receive it beyond the striker if humanly possible. Well, the Iranian medical team are uh, still down inside the six-yard box. They're now sorting Van's gloves out for him. But the captain has finally vacated the scene. And we are in danger of actually getting a little football in here at the Khalifa Stadium in Al Rayyan. And uh, the booze you can hear are uh, for the huge amount of time that has been taken. It is time that is uh, going to be added on. I'm still not convinced he's fit to play he must have passed the appropriate concussion protocols to be allowed to continue there was no way that there was any danger to his health he wasn't in a fit state to continue he would be allowed to you wouldn't think well, if, if I was Harry Kane now I'd stand on the edge of the box and put pressure on this goal kick I really would he's taken that long to uh, to sort himself out the cat okay so we're back underway after a seven and a half minute delay it's still nil nil here on talk sport and england straight away from the goal kick turn over possession and will be able to bring it forward again towards the edge of the penalty area it's laid back for rice and rice in turn to the dark head fix set harry Maguire. stones alongside him winning his 60th camp for england today but Maguire has just turned away and Tariq Me will uh, chase after him. He's drilled it in and a slightly uh, bobbling ball in towards Luke Shaw at left back, but he's got a throw out of it, which will be taken over on that only oh, far side. Off. Jim. And yeah, he's not going to be able to continue as we expected. He's he's now down on one knee and is sitting down and now lies on his back. Uh, so there's going to be a further delay and uh, Ben and Vans having passed the the medical diagnosis that he's going to be okay has lasted only another 30 seconds or so. Yeah, as I say, he couldn't go on. Carlos Quiroz just putting his hands on his head there. It's a big blow for them losing your goalkeeper this early on in the game. And he's going to, in fact, have to be stretched off by the look of it, which is uh, even greater concern for 
blue vested stretcher bearers uh, making their way down towards the corner flag and are being waved on by the assistant referee. And Baron Van's not going to be able to leave the field under his own steam. Uh, he clearly picked up a really hefty knock. And Baron Van, who did play at the last World Cup, as I mentioned, uh, a the goalkeeper who's got a, a prolific long throw, he's actually got the world record for the longest throw in a competitive game, he's thrown it 200 feet, which is a, a pretty decent effort, we're not going to be seeing that today, now we are going to be seeing the competitive debut of Hossin, Hossin E, who at one stage in his career went more than 14 and a half hours without conceding a goal in the Iranian league. Well, you know how it is, you wait four and a half years for a World Cup to turn up and then you've just got minute after minute after minute of treatment being administered. Jim, I think any sympathy for the goalkeeper's waning. He literally at the moment is four yards from the touchline where he could just walk off. He's been on his feet after the injury and he's decided to get on a stretcher and probably walk from there. The stretcher bearers will take him straight across the pitch. My goodness, man. They don't make them like they used to, fella, as they say. No, they certainly don't. So, Hosseini is staying first bump from Carlos Queiroz. We've seen it all before, of course. This is fourth World Cup. He was in charge of Portugal, who he led out of the group stage back in 2010. And he's also been in charge of the uh, Iranians in both 2014 and 2018, although they didn't progress from the group stage in either of those. And won only once in the process, which was a win against Morocco last time out. It is a suspected concussion, understandably, and as such it's going to be a concussion substitution as opposed to one of the five. So, Hosseini coming on for Berenband, a change being made 19 minutes into the game. Yeah, it astounds me, in about 60, 70 minutes time, Jim, a substitution will be made and they'll tell the substitute to go off the far side of the pitch near the touchline. The stretcher bearers have just walked the stretcher from the far side of the penalty box right across the pitch and off this side, I have. the game astounds me at times. So Hossein Hosseini is on, and we're back on the way again with uh, Trippier playing it forward for uh, Bakayo Saka for England on halfway, and again playing the way that he's facing. There have been more minutes lost to treatment to the goalkeeper so far than the Iranians have played successful passes. England working for Sterling, trying to get Bellingham in towards the edge of the penalty area. This is where Iran might potentially be dangerous as they get it forward on the counter-attack. Jahan Bash working forward through the midfield. England quickly got the shape back right behind the ball. No thoughts of a counter-attack really. Jahan Bash not the quickest. He had Taremi ahead of him, but England can get it back for Jordan Pickford. Had it back forward again, and Stone's just a dallying a little bit. Came out, Taremi came to meet it. Collision between the pair of them. Taremi on side because Stone's didn't push forward in conjunction with the other defenders. Now the Iranians don't get a free kick, but they have got possession with Milad Maharami on the left-hand side, and the left-back wins the throw for Iran, who ventured into England territory for the first time with 20 minutes on the clock. Still nil-nil here on Talk Sport, but expect the end of 10 minutes of added time at the end of this first half. Now a free kick is given for an injudicious lunge by Bellingham, and a free kick that will be taken has to be the captain has won it just a yard in from the left-hand touchline and almost level the edge of the box really important when you when you have the ascendancy in possession that when that changes and free kicks of this ill come in concentration has to be of high high standard because you get in a mentality isn't this game comfortable we've got all the ball we're just waiting to score a goal and then wham you lose your runner or something of that ilk potentially might happen. So your hand bash stands over it, hands to feed the captain as well, hands on hips. It'll be a left footed away swinger from him or potentially a right footed in swinger from the former Brighton man who threatened to make a darting run. Now he comes back and takes it himself. It's half clear. Trippier spoons it out of the, uh, the edge of the penalty area. Naralahi getting it back. It's a very deep cross, a little bit too deep. Will still be recycled on the left by Johan Bash, but he's lost out to Saka. Saka with a good little one-two with Mason Mount, and he wins the throw. 
Well, this World Cup starting the same way as the last one did with the opposition goalkeeper going off early in the game. You might remember that in the first game against the Tunisia back in 2018, Luis Hassan, uh, the man that went off injured on that occasion. England winning by like, two goals to one to get off to a winning start last time, but needed a 90th minute winner from Harry Kane to do it. They've actually only lost one of their last seven opening games at the World Cup, which was the one that was played in Manaus in the Brazilian rainforest against Italy back in 2014. Just looking at, sorry Jim, just looking at Luke Shaw's position there, I think he should be more advanced. He's, uh, he's probably 20 metres too deep. He needs to advance a bit more. That will give the opportunity for Sterling just to come to a little pocket of space and ask more questions of the back line, the back five. Now Brazilian referee has given England a free kick for a foul by uh, Naralahi. Mason now coming to uh, meet the ball. Naralahi just gave him a shove. And will take the free kick over on the left-hand touchline. And then a very clever touch from Matt will get it forward towards Shaw. And Shaw will continue his run down the left-hand side. A chance to deliver with three waiting in the penalty area. Bellingham coming to meet it after the initial cross was deflected. And the Iranian sweep up. Parali Banji can knock it away and out of play for a throw. Which will be taken again on the England left-hand side. They go through the first period here on TalkSport, your World Cup station. And it's nil no, no. Yeah, really good play there. That's better from Shaw. His, his position in the build-up was more advanced. Good little one-two. Got in behind. Just got his third cross block. But good play. And Mount's taken up some really good movements as well from that inside left position. Just darting in behind um, into the point of the penalty box, basically, to receive. Well, about 15 or so minutes away from dusk here in Al Rayyan at the uh, Khalifa International Stadium. Well, for all of England's possession, they're yet to create a worthwhile shot on either goalkeeper's goal. Well, the Baron Van or the man that has replaced him, Hosseini. But as I mentioned, for all the fact that we've played 24 minutes, we've probably only played about 14 minutes of football. Maguire heads the ball away, finds Rice. Rice down to the England left where Shaw will feed it back to him and he was caught in the process by Johan Bash who picks up the first yellow card of the game. Mario Reza Johan Bash, the man cautioned. I think it's really important with the, with the game and the, uh, the possession we got. I've been really pleased with the possession, how everyone settled into it, looked very comfortable on the ball. But we can't lose the intensity and the ability to play forward at every opportunity. Stones for Bellingham. And now Rice. It's not played at a sparkling tempo by England. And it's uh, Mason Mount makes his way forward and he was uh, tripped on his way through by Karimi. It's a steady tempo rather than spectacular. It's uh, not pedestrian by any stretch of the imagination. Trippier will uh, push forward to take this free kick. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of niggly fouls potentially from the Iranians, but it's important that we get on the ball really quickly and play the ball quickly. Uh, Trippier looking for that same free kick that we saw earlier down the inside right channel for a run from Harry Kane. It was red on that occasion, almost found its way through. And then Tereni trying to get the better of Trippier has uh, just siphoned it out of play. Uh, Tereni going down, claiming that he was fouled, and Trippier disdainfully waved him back to his feet. It's Tereni who's got a an excellent record, 13 goals for Porto already this season, and scored 8 in qualifying. It was a man that missed a great late chance to win the game against Portugal and win the group back in the 2018 World Cup, where they came just about a foot or so away from finishing ahead of Spain and Portugal. Now ranked in the top 20 in the world, but England dominating proceedings without having a cutting edge at the moment. Saka can't find a way through. Knocked away by the back line again. This time the free kick's been given the round's way. And it's Karimi who is uh, down hurt. Saka just with uh, a quick change of uh, feet. And there was very minimal contact between Saka and Karimi. But he's, he's down, he's holding his knee. And he too might be in need of treatment. 26 minutes in. Stop starts an understatement. Stuart Pierce, it's nil now. Yeah, I think the stop-start nature of the game so far certainly would uh, benefit the Iranians more more than the England team at present, you know, and it's important that we keep the tem tempo of this game up. 
England turning over possession again. Kane just trying to get his foot to it to uh, poke it through. Man might be able to find Saka, who can receive it on the edge of the penalty area. Left footed, cross punch shot was a miss hit really, and just the bobbled its way through for Hosseini, the substitute Iranian goalkeeper. It will go down as a shot on target, and there have been precious few of those, but it remains nil nil. And uh, you know, a lofty vantage point here, you can feel uh, a little bit of a breeze. The conditions uh, certainly are uh, conducive to good football. Decent watered surface, nice temperature. It's not airless by any stretch of the imagination, not too hot. And as I mentioned, the night's going to be falling and will have fallen by the time the second half starts. We would talk sport where still waiting for England's first real stellar move of this World Cup. Sack has been caught here and another free kick has uh, gone England's way inside their own half. Okay, Southgate at the edge of the technical area is uh, just down, hands outstretched for a moment. Let's go back pitch side, Faye Carruthers, our England correspondent, is behind the goal away to our left-hand side. Faye, what have you spotted? Well, perfect conditions as you say Jim actually it's been really nice and cool down here a little bit chilly actually but the players needed to keep themselves warm after that moment there and Jordan Pickford actually came over at one point looked at me looked at his watch and started laughing and rolled his eyes oh the goalkeepers union they know all the tricks don't they now uh, here's uh, Trippier Trippier back for Maguire he will make his way to the left of John Stones and uh, will be played in there Maguire turning it back four stones once more. Harry Maguire just glad to be getting some first team action. He only started one of the last 12 of Manchester United's Premier League games. Going to be played for by Stones out of Luke Shaw again. Making only his second appearance out of the World Cup. His first coming against Costa Rica in a, a dead rubber in that hugely disappointing campaign in Brazil in 2014. Trippier down the line here for Saka. Saka might be able to get to the byline, he's actually checked and worked it back the other way with uh, Trippier in support and the red shirts converge on the pair of them, Trippier threading it through neatly, good ball around the corner, Saka trying to get it in after Sterling's good work and a shot into the side netting came from Mason Mann. That was better from England, more incision inside the Iranian final third but not a shot on target at the end of it. No, really good play by England then. Yeah. Everyone looking pretty comfortable in possession of the ball. England playing some really good stuff and a little reverse pass around the corner from Sterling to Saka and his cross was just slightly behind them. And it's important that England, on the build-up, that they're building up with, with basically 2-3-5. They've got to have, when you look across that, that uh, back line of, of Iran, you've got to see five English players with the makeup of the front three and probably the two full-backs making up the, uh, the five players. One out of play for an Iran throw. It's the first ever meeting between these two nations. In fact, England have only ever played Asian opposition at the World Cup once in the past, which was a 1-0 win against Kuwait back in 1982 when Trevor Francis scored the winner in about this stage of the game. England trying to play out for the back and Bellingham uh, with a poor touch survived it and the Iranians were furious because they found that there was a foul. England can now break and try and break quickly. They got in between the lines for a moment. The round have got 10 back behind the ball. But it's fired in now. Trippy right hand side of the penalty. He pulls it back. Kane's trying to hit it on. Bounces awkwardly, but away from an England player. Now towards Jude Bellingham. Bellingham now to Trippy. Trippy to the uh, corner of the penalty area where Sterling's quick feet got the better of carrying me. He ends up with a corner. England calls mayhem from the first one. And we felt should have had a penalty. What will happen from this second one? Yeah, good opportunity here. Some really good play there. And once again, great cross field pass to Trippy who got in a really good advanced area for a full back. Built up play and then Sterling's ability to nip past the player and just uh, manage to get cut out with uh, a good defensive challenge. But I think any set play, we should really fancy our chances, put pressure on them, good movement from our players. Well, let's hope the officials are watching everything that's going on this time. Harry Me and Declan Rice are just having a word with each other inside the six-yard box. Trippier raises a tattooed right arm, just indicating exactly where this ball is going to be played to his teammates. Saka is showing for a short one. I'm sure that Trippier is going to fire this straight in. Sterling waits on the edge of the six. Harry Kane making a run as well. Fired in there, he's headed off the post. And England inches away 
from taking the lead. The old familiar story of England's success from a set piece very nearly coming to fruition again. Ball fired into the congested penalty area. And England inches away from the perfect start. Iran will bring the ball forward now and lose it. He goes out of play for a throw, but Harry Maguire could not have come closer. Absolutely super header there by Harry Maguire. Great movement from him. Wanted it more than anybody else. And he's just got there, skimmed off his head and just hit the crossbar and out it come. No one there to tap in the rebound. Right score. Five international goals in 2021, Harry Maguire. He's got more for his country than any other defender in three lines history. And he very nearly ended another World Cup goal to his tally there, having netted against Sweden in the uh, quarters back in 2018. Great movement, just too high for Stones, but Maguire coming in behind him, turned the header towards the top left-hand corner. And it came smack off the bar. So fantastic contribution, two corners, Maguire in my opinion has been brought down for a penalty, but not given, and hit the crossbar on the other occasion. And Jordan Pickford I understand actually celebrated from his view, he thought 100 yards away that it had gone in, but it didn't, it remains 0-0, Luke Shaw back out to the left hand side for Sterling, and Rice will pick it up in the centre of midfield, down to Kieran Trippier. Trippier poking it down the line, Mikhail Saka will chase after it, should be relatively easy to uh, defend, currently turning it forward, but only as far as Jude Bellingham, Bellingham a yard in off the right hand touch line, goes back for Kieran Trippier again. Trippier back to Stones and Maguire brings it forward and all of the England outfield players are in Iranian territory now. Pickford well outside his penalty area to Try and take a look at what's going on. He's been a spectator. He's had the ball in his hands at all. With 34 minutes in to what will be an elongated first half. England have hit the bar and should have had a penalty. Shaw firing it in. Bellingham! One in England! And the immensely talented teenager is off and running on his World Cup debut. Heading the ball into the top right-hand corner. The perfect start. 2022 World Cup campaign. It is richly deserved. England on top from the very first whistle. The goal has been coming and Jude Bellingham provides it. Stands, hands outstretched, takes the adulation from the travelling England support. England are off and running in 2022. I've got to say, massive credit's got to go to Harry Maguire. From the offset, I think the two efforts from the corner has given him great confidence, picked the ball up, travelled with it, and broke the lines with a wonderful pass. And from that moment on, Iran were in a bit of trouble, defence turned, and Bellingham's movement arriving at a fantastic time, and just glanced it on, goalkeeper, no chance. England 1-0. Well, that really will settle the nerves because there's nothing worse I would imagine than being in a game where you're dominating possession and really dominating it you're not creating too many chances where you've had one that hasn't gone in where you feel that a little bit of luck has gone against you as well and there's been a poor decision and you're not on top but then when you do find the breakthrough you really feel as though you set. That feels like a big platform now for England. And it is a rare first half goal. England on the front foot again. Kane outside him. The ball just over hit too much on it for the run of Mason Mount. And that was a half promising position that something more could have been made of. It's a wonderful ball. Flied it in by Luke Shaw. And Jude Bellingham just stole a march on Hosseini. Came to meet it. Swivel flicked his head and curved it into the top right hand corner. A delicious finish. Going back to my point earlier, the key to games like this when teams are banking up like they do is getting your full backs in really advanced early positions. And I'll tell you what, from an ex left back, that cross by Shaw was absolutely magnificent. Now exactly what you need from an attacking fullback and Luke Shaw provided it Jude Bellingham doing the rest his first goal for his country and what a time to score him a man with a, a habit 
of finding the net on the big occasions these days. He scored in his first four Champions League games this season. His first ever tournament start. And the 19-year-old from the Midlands has given England the lead. As I mentioned, they haven't scored in the first half of any of the previous six games, which was their longest run without a first-half goal since 1985. Bellingham has it again here. Bellingham will go down to his right-hand side for Kieran Trippier. Good movement behind him from Stones, who offered himself for the uh, pass. He saw that uh, Trippier potentially was going to go down a blind alley. Kane trying to flick it on England. Have to make sure they're not caught in possession here inside their own half. But there's a, a handball in there by Cheshmi, and it's going to be a free kick which will be taken by England. Well, Faker others are down behind the other goal, the one that Jordan Pickford is defending. He celebrated when Harry Maguire nearly scored. How was he when that went in? Oh, he went absolutely crazy, Jim, as you can imagine, punching the air, jumping up, and then looking around all the England fans who started singing Hey Jude when it went in the back of the net. Hey Jude, he hasn't let them down. Second youngest England goal scorer at a World Cup, behind only Michael Owen. Here's Trippier on the England right-hand side, England leading 1-0. Bellingham born for the big occasions. Look at him now with a lovely pirouette and a little one-two around the edge of the penalty area with Sterling. And his industry unrewarded, he's unlucky. It's gone out of play for a throw that the Iranians will take in the left-back position. Every tournament that England do half well in, there is somebody that steps forward and really has their uh, the mantling within the team exaggerated by what they've achieved. And, you know, I know we're still in the first half of the first game, but it might just be too bad in this time. I think England or not, anyone that's going to go to the advanced uh, stages of any major cup competition, someone will spring out, and quite often someone that you, you don't expect. I don't think there's any surprises if Jude Bellingham, Bellingham has a wonderful tournament this time out. I was expecting it 15 months ago. He certainly made a good start. Yeah, three substitute appearances in the Euros starting today and scoring today as the lights come on on the, the big arch over on the far touch line of the stadium here uh, in Al Rayyan. And the Iranians will be able to bring it forward. And they have it in the midfield. Nuralahi trying to work it out towards Johan Bash. Right footed ball inside the penalty area from him and sliding in Declan Rice who's going to go out of play for a corner. Maguire stopped that happening calmly. Side footed it to Bellingham on the edge of his own penalty area. He worked it back for Shaw and Shaw will clear. Forward through the midfield. England winning a plenty of second ball at the moment and Mount's done really well. That's a great exhibition of strength and a wonderful crossfield ball on the turn. A big out trivia. It's the pass of the tournament so far. Saka making his way down the uh, right as judged to have fouled Maharami. It wasn't how uh, many saw it, but it has been given as a free kick. Iran's way inside their own box. 40 minutes gone, probably uh, 9 or 10 minutes of first time stuff. It's time to be added. England, very good value for a 1 0 lead against Iran here on Torchport. Here's the former England captain, Stuart Pierce. I think they've approached the game in a brilliant manner from from kickoff, they've been really confident on the ball, I would say on occasion they've really took liberties sort of playing out from the back but they're so comfortable from 1 to 11 in possession of the ball they're happy to trust each other with the ball which is brilliant, big one for me, don't lose the intensity, we've got our nose in front now but keep asking questions of the Iranians Maguire and Stone's passing axis is uh, one that has been well used so far. Remember, the other game in this group is uh, live view on TalkSport later today. The United States taking on Wales. We've got it for you live right here. It kicks off 7 o'clock your time, Nigel Adley and Dean Saunders talking through the action. Well, England will be top of the group by then. They are at the moment as things stand. With Kane in possession inside Iranian territory. And the ball is worked out to... The England left-hand side again for Shaw. Shaw to Rice, Bellingham to Stones who's made his way forward as he loves to do with Manchester City and he's given license to by Gareth Southgate as well. Stones inside the Iranian half of the centre circle. Just a fainted to drop his shot and move quickly the other way to work it out towards Luke Shaw again. Shaw's ball into the feet of Sterling. 
Now we're back towards Stones. England have found possession so easy to come by in this game. Stringing the passes together very ably at the moment. Now the longer diagonal border. Try and get Luke Shaw in again. Shaw's got the beating of Sardag Maharani on that far touch line. And the Iranians clear it's not the best little reverse ball played in. And they uh, get another corner out of it as uh, Raheem Sterling trying to get there as Mount played the through ball. The slide against just locked away and England have corner number three. The Iranian back line and midfield cannot deal with us when we play the ball. One, twos, give and goes. Magnificently well played. I've got to say as well, Declan Rice has broke up maybe two or three potential counter attacks and a cross field pass slightly earlier, and he will be invaluable to England. Maybe not as much in this game, but certainly games going forward. I think they should have had a penalty from the first corner. They hit the bar for the second. Here's the third. It's an away swing that Maguire climbs high for, and he's landed in the air for the edge of the penalty area by Saka. Two youngsters have both scored, and England leads 2-0 before half-time. More set-piece dominance from the three Lions as Maguire headed it down. And Bukayo Saka, whose last game in a major tournament for England, ended in despair, has just scored a magnificent half-volley on his World Cup debut. England 2, it ran nil. Well, the Iranian team to a man are haranguing the referee now. They're, they're suggesting there was a... I don't know what they're suggesting, to be quite honest with you. A foul in there somewhere. I'm not seeing it. Absolutely no chance. Inept defending. Not strong defending. And I've got to say, what a beautiful finish for this young man. Well, they're claiming that Maguire, in climbing high to nod it down, has leant over and into Cheshmi and that he was fouled, it wasn't strong enough for the Iranian defender. And you say that if it was the other end as well, there's... doesn't seem to be any justification for chalking that off. What a cathartic moment for in, Mikhail Saka. In all honesty, Jim, if they chalk that off for that header from Maguire, then you've got to ask questions about the earlier one when Harry Maguire was wrestled to the ground. Incredible. And the Iranians almost refusing to kick off because they're complaining about the decision. Brilliant play by England. Bellingham on 35. Saka on 44. England starting with nine on the side that started that final in the Euros. And the two who've been added to those nine have both scored in this first half. Well, as I say, the two that have added it certainly were worth their place in the side. A fantastic season so far. And, you know, from England's point of view, nothing silly. Don't take too many chances in regard to playing. Be comfortable on the ball. Don't give opportunities to Iran to press you and give it away cheaply. Play safe, but keep playing with tempo. Well, the Iranians have uh, played 15 games in the World Cup in the past. They've only ever scored twice in one of them. They need two for a draw here, and England push forward as we go into 14 added minutes. It's 3 0. Kane crossing from the right hand side, and Sterling is in on the act. Well, this is like Panama all over again. What a sensational first half! Kane making his way forward. Great near post run from Raheem Sterling. And it was the movement that did it. And he just got his right foot to it, a flick it into the bottom right hand corner. And England have scored twice in two minutes. And they lead by three goals to nil. Well, incredibly, the Nations League this summer seems like a horrible nightmare that didn't really happen at this moment in time. The team have sort of approached this game in a brilliant manner. Fantastic play by Saka and then Bellingham. And then Kane's movement and ability to just swirl and cross. And the arrival of Sterling in the box, outside of the fort. Fantastic finish, well-controlled finish. That's tougher than actually he made it look. An England side who hadn't won in six games coming into this tournament, who were at their lowest ebb for a long, long time. And 45 minutes has done wonders. What a panacea for the Ills this has been. Bellingham, Saka, Raheem Sterling, who'd never previously scored in a World Cup. 
now breaking that duck in his 10th game in a World Cup for his country. And England are three goals to the good. And Iran are in disarray. The Iranian players continually moaning to the referee now. They're not happy with what's going on, the odd decision. What I would say to them is this, you're fortunate you haven't given a penalty away and the referee let you off earlier in the game. But at the moment, England exemplary, confident to a man, good on the ball, clinical in front of goal. Two minutes and 32 seconds between goals two and three. And England will hope for more before half-time. As I mentioned, 14 added minutes at the end of this first half. England have it again, batting him on the edge of the penalty area, trying to trick his way through on the edge of the D, but it'll be clear, only as far as Rice, breaking it up again, a perfect illustration of what Stuart Pearce was telling you here on Talk Sport. And Rice goes back for Stones, forward through the midfield here for Luke Shaw, here's Kane, back for Rice again, and now to Jude Bellingham, who's the goal makes him England's youngest ever goal-scoring debutant in the World Cup. Saka, outside in Trippier, trying to make the run. Uh, he's uh, very cleverly back heeled it, straight into the uh, captain, Hans Safi, and it's come off him and gone out of play for a corner which England will take. Well, let me go through the list again. Should have had a penalty from the first, hit the bar from the second, score from the third, and now he's the fourth one. Yeah, as I say, credit to the manager at this moment in time, team selection absolutely bang on, the team have hit the ground running and uh, th that will gain a lot of confidence within the group at this stage I think, you know, we couldn't have asked for any more, three line score line, three nil score line approaching half time. In comes Trippier's corner towards the edge of the penalty area, that one is easily cleared. Bellingham, back healing it back for Trippier again into the feet of Sterling, Saka making a, a good run for him inside the penalty area, yeah, stretched out of left foot, trying to bring it down and then he was nearly brought down himself, but Iran scrambled it away, only as far as Rice, Trippier goes back behind square to find John Stones, and now England will work it forward with Mason Mount playing it out towards Harry Kane, three goals to the good Kane, the uh, Don Booger at the last World Cup hasn't got any of those, but he won't mind that. The Trippier, in any possession, the season he's had for Newcastle United, how brilliant he's been since he made the move to Tyneside. Galvanising figure at the club, he's been absolutely integral in everything that they've done under Eddie Howe so far. And bring that form into the World Cup with him. Saka wrestling on the right-hand touchline. It's uh, played forward down the Iranian left. They got it past him. But Bellingham's in there. Uh, Win it back from Neddy Taremi. And now Maguire will work it forward and try and get England going again on the uh, far touchline, which is the England left. And night very much falling here now. The western side of the capital. Play forward towards Rice. Rice inside the centre circle just works it to his right-hand side for Trippier. Trippier to Stones to Rice and then back for Stones and Adam Maguire and again the uh, possession so easy for England to come by and the England fans those that have travelled out here will be ecstatic with what they've seen so far Trippier's got it again play four horridly trying to get Kane around the back of Parani Ganji and ran in there all red just clear the lines and uh, England will walk around and pick it up at the back and, and literally slow it down to walking pace. Trippier to Stones and now to Maguire again. Now a reminder of what's coming up for you later on Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2, the second game today, Senegal against the Dutch, which is live on Talk Sport 2 from 4 o'clock. First thing, reacting to everything that's happened here on drive after the game. And you won't want to miss that either. We've got the talk sport app. You can just uh, swipe one way and the other to uh, keep abreast of all the reaction and the fallout from what at the moment has been a very promising start to this World Cup for England. And also, that game between Senegal and the Netherlands. Back 
coming up later, USA against the Wales. Uh, the Welsh, the other game in this group, which kicks off at seven. And that's here on Talk Sport. Sacker, score of the second England goal. Twisting and turning on the edge of the penalty area. Mount trying to play it back to him, and then it's cleared into Sacker and bounces on the dead ball line. And goes out of play for a goal kick. It is England three, Iran nil in first half stoppage time. Yeah, I've got to say, the superlatives run out for me at the moment for this performance. I think they've, from the first moment, they've got on the ball, they pass well, they pick their moments to play forward and bisect the lines. They've hit diagonals that have picked out both fullbacks that have got advanced. Uh, Shaw's delivery for, for the goal, magnificent. Um, and it, it's very, very difficult to look at any of the players and say, any of them have played slightly under par, they've been magnificent. Rice has broken up any slight problem that there might have been and he's going to be integral to this team going forward. Cheshmi, who's playing in the middle of the three set of halves, ordinarily a defensive midfielder. The bearded Iranian has uh, just knocked it away. Picked up by England in a deeper position with Trippier. Trippier for Stones. Stones thought about going back for Pickford, just turning instead, and then played a potentially awful ball through the middle. And that is part of something Cascarino was talking about uh, with me yesterday on air on the, uh, the weekend sports breakfast with Natalie, just mentioning the fact that if he feels that there is a, a chink in the England armory, it is the way that they play that particular pass. Just a little bit loose around the edge of the penalty area where possession can be turned over. And we've seen it two or three times today. Yeah, we have. As I say, because they're so comfortable in possession, they trust each other with the ball. The likes of Bellingham and Rice, they're screaming for the ball. So it's very difficult as a centre-half not to supply them with the ball and encourage them to have it. Now we're in the ninth minute of stoppage time. Uh, another six to go. It's 3-0 to England, goals from Bellingham, Saka and Sterling in a devastating 11-minute spell. Ram winning possession back and trying to work it forward down the left with Hashafi. Didn't get too far. Mason Hashafi, who plays his club football in Greece. The third man to play at three World Cups for the Iranians. Set to get off to a losing start by the look of it, although there is still. At least 50 minutes of action ahead of us. And here's Kieran Trippier for England now. Trippier into Jude Bellingham. It's a giant amongst men in that midfield. Play four from Stones to the retreating mount. And then back for Maguire. Maguire launches it long. It starts a lot of Luke Shaw. He just pinned it a little too high for him, although Shaw got his head to it. He could do no more. Goes out of play for a throw, and then they get another throw as uh, Mason Mount quickly came across to close down the ball for him. The England side, who had they lost today or failed to win, it would have equaled the worst ever run in three lines history of seven without a win. The last time they went six without a win, the seventh opponent in the sequence was Poland. And Stewart scored that night in a 3 0 victory, which got England back on track and a, a sense that this may well get them back on track as well but also a sense that there aren't any more much more significant battles than this one lying ahead because Iran have been really poor for all that England have been excellent here's Terry Mee winning at possession back worked out towards the left hand side an opportunity now for Hassafi to get it forward and there's a man over on the far post and he's volleyed on the bar but England lost the man there appeals that he should be uh, offside in fact the flag did come up belatedly but Harry Maguire in the drifting into the centre and they just created space at the far post seeing the replay again Stuart initially uh, you called it immediately and you're absolutely right as the ball has worked out has if he was or something yeah as you mentioned earlier that it's just that loose pass you know what I mean things are comfortable you're 3-0 up and you take the odd liberty and, and trips there just just played a sort of diagonal ball inside and it's gone over Deck's head and all of a sudden it created that extra man overload Just stopping again for a moment. And Rice saying it is a throw. And the referee concurring. And the play restarts. Trippier taking it. It's a thumbs up from him to his uh, manager, Gareth Southgate, at uh, something that was uh, said to him from close quarters. Trippier has it again, controlling the ball from John Stones. And Stone, Stones looks to uh, turn and play it back and find Jordan Pickford who will control it. And then Flash it forward, left foot it out towards the far touch line. Shaw came to meet it, and had he just got his head to that, might have been flick, you know, able to flick it onto the path of Raheem Sterling and in behind the back line. But 
wasn't a beat, handed out by the Iranian defender Sardeg Maharami, and now a play for a throw, which has been taken by England since the third goal went in, they conserving their energy coming up to half time and have slowed things right down. The referee again has sort of spotted something and has pulled play back to give England a free kick near the halfway line. A chance to get the big guns forward again. 12 minutes of first half stoppage time have elapsed, another two to go. Kane making his way forward, but he's the only England player really in and around the edge of the penalty area. Maguire hasn't made the, the run forward, indeed he's the man standing over the free kick. And just works it short into the feet of Chu Bani. Bani cleverly turning it forward through the midfield and another free kick is given and there was a little bit of anger from Mason Mount. He felt that was a, a poor challenge on him. And just catching him on the ankle. So he's back on his feet and England have an opportunity that Kieran Trippier will just move forward to take. I mean it's right at the limit of range this, but 13 yards outside the penalty area maybe. Trippier going to fancy his chances or is it going to be a ball teased up towards the the aerial targets Maguire and Stones have both come forward and they stand in the far post area I can't understand England at the moment they've sent the, the two big boys up two centre halves but there's six players outside the box someone's got to get in for those knockdowns Maguire or Stones has got every chance of winning this you need the seconds around him Warren Stone stand at the, at the far post and there's one Iranian defender between them. It's uh, played into that kind of area. It hits Maguire and then Stones who did well to react and adjust and control it. Recycle play. Working well, back outside the penalty area for Trippier. And now down towards Luke Shaw. Shaw's ball into the feet of Bellingham. Bellingham goes back for Rice and goes out for Shaw again. And then played out to the England left-hand side where that can uh, ride a challenge and uh, then lay it back towards halfway for Bellingham. Bellingham controlling it. Just work towards the edge of the centre circle for Trippier. Another ball into the midfield. That one given away though by England and uh, Maguire has uh, done well to instantly win it back. Bellingham controlling it. Uh, Maguire put under the more telling pressure this time by uh, Harry B. He goes out of play and the uh, Iranians are far from happy that the uh, decision has gone against them. They won't be happy with many aspects of that first half which has been brought to an end. A magnificent first 45 minutes as far as England were concerned. It's the first time in 40 years that they've scored three goals in their opening game in the World Cup and they've done it before half time. Goals from the two youngsters, Bellingham and Saka and Raheem Sterling's 20th goal for his country. His first on the big stage as well. Alisson lost to it as well. There should have been a penalty. They hit the bar. It was almost under the circumstances. Pretty perfect. Not a bad opening 45 minutes to the 2022 World Cup. From a three lines perspective, they lead Iran 3 0 at the break on Talk Sport. And it is important, of course, 45 minutes in, that you keep feet on the ground and that retain a level of perspective. But a fantastic start as far as England are concerned. The Iranians are making a triple change. Estelahi is coming on. And he will anchor the midfield. Golizade is also coming on. And Kamani is a centre-half. So they bring a defensive midfielder, a centre-half and a winger on for the second half. And the players that are coming off, Karimi, Cheshmi, and Yahambash. It'll be interesting to see whether they keep the shape or whether they move back to the back four. Remember, they are wedded to a 4-1-4-1 formation. So interesting that Carlos Queiroz has uh, changed it today for this first game of the World Cup. Anyway, we're back underway. England white shirts with the dark blue trim, dark blue shorts. They're kicking from right to left in this second half. Now the Iranians in all red. England leading by three goals to nil. Bellingham, Saka and Sterling. All on target in a devastating 11-minute span coming up at half-time. Ball laid back for Pickford. And Pickford will play it out towards the England right-hand side for Trippier. Stones receiving it. There's a much more accurate...
active and industrious press from Iran in this second half. The Stones and Maguire are given the chief possession they had in the first half. It's laid back for Pickford, who tried to take a touch and miscontrolled it. He did get it away. It spooned out off an Iranian player towards the edge of the penalty area, where England then won the seconds. Bellingham has given a free kick away, but that was the nervy moment, and Jordan Pickford raises his left hand by way of apology. Yeah, these are the traps that we fall into at our peril by being so slow with the passing across the back line, taking too many risks. Good teams don't give you opportunities, and we've got to make sure we don't do that. Iranians almost looking out of possession there in a sort of 4-3-2-1 uh, formation. So it's going to be very congested in the centre of the pitch. We're going to have to go out wide and keep using our fullbacks. Ball is headed forward by Trippier. Kane coming back from an offside position was in uh, no position to go for it. Uh, the Iranians will work it out of the right hand side again for the Harami. The Harami to Golizade. He's given it away. The uh, substitute Bellingham is going to be able to bring it forward for England and work it very quickly out to the uh, right hand side where Saka, also a goal scorer, can't get it under control. Kane whips the ball in. Half cleared and and the Iranians will get it further away towards uh, halfway. Uh, uh, England pick it up again with Shaw. And Shaw finding that Maguire and still England having the lion's share of possession. Maguire's ball through the midfield. It's certainly picked up by Declan Rice. And now Bellingham will turn on the right hand side and play for, but Saka is flagged offside. Uh, I don't want to be accused of taking things to extreme here and there is still 45 minutes ahead of us but that said Gareth Southgate will be looking at the uh, the situation and a little bit of match management here looking at the management of resources in terms of the uh, tournament as a whole and England possibly in a position that they might be able to rest a few of the first choice 11 later in this game we'll get your views on that in a moment as Kane drives forward he got past the first two challenges but not the third which was uh, a rash lunge which has resulted in a yellow card for Pirani Ganji who has caught Harry Kane who stays down holding his ankle yeah going back to your point there the next goal is vitally important in this if England get the next goal I think as a manager you, you're thinking I'm going to make a few changes here um, and that will be utopia for England. You're looking and saying we need to look after probably Harry Kane, maybe Calvin Wilson or Rashford getting an opportunity to run out for him. And as I say that, Harry Kane is, is still on the floor. Hopefully that's not too much of a problem. You're looking at Grealish and Foden definitely need some football. And it, you made a great point at half time. How important Declan Rice is going to be for this team. Now, if we have a problem with Declan, he's a direct replacement will be Kelvin Phillips doing a similar type of role um, so he'll need the minutes from a physical point of view so if we can get him on the pitch at some stage today all well and good and I think Harry Kane's very very fortunate I'm hoping he's very fortunate not to have a real problem here with his ankle because well, it, was a, it was a really poor challenge yeah. wasn't it uh, he's, he is back on his feet uh, Faker others got a better view of Vanna she's behind that goal only about 25 yards away from where Harry's receiving his treatment Faye yeah all the players immediately gathered around Harry, uh, Harry came and he was holding his right foot and then the physios came on moved about his ankle and he's looking a bit, little bit more comfortable as he walks off the pitch kicking his legs up so it looks to be okay and the nation breathes a sigh of relief. So Kane OK, making his way off towards this uh, near touchline. Karani Ganji picks up a yellow card for that challenge. And uh, Jan Bash, who was taken off at half-time, is the only other player to have been booked so far. So this free kick is in a, a promising position. It is in Kieran Trippier territory. Saw him ping a fantastic one in against the Manchester City earlier this season before Newcastle from a position that was very marginally more central than this. Uh, the Iranian wall is five strong and is a yard inside the box. England have two in front of that wall to block the view. Maguire and Bellingham will split away. Trippier takes it, smacks it into the wall, and then it comes back out to him. He tried to knock it square, took a deflection, and England are able to maintain possession, but back inside their own half. Shaw can get it forward in towards Trippier, who's still up there. He finds the feet of Sterling. Saw Kane's run and tried to backheel it into his path. 
and then another poor challenge from the house right in front of the referee who has let that go Trippier was just taken right off his feet by Morala he that was naughty and he's down and in some anguish and the ball will be put out of play and the referee surely has got to pull play back England still have possession and so he played the advantage but surely he's got to produce a yellow card for that well England have dropped the tempo of the way they're passing the ball and as I mentioned at the back end of the first half that's enabled the Iranian players to get a little bit tired and all it was was a foot on top of the other but of course there's no protection with the, the modern day boot obviously that, that really hurts stud just goes straight through the lever or the plastic whichever it may be and uh, Trippier certainly felt the effects of that well no yellow car forthcoming uh, possession restored to England, sportingly by the Iranians after a, a throw was taken by Martin Harami. Uh, Rice had put the ball out of play so that uh, treatment could be received. So Kane and uh, Trippier have uh, both been down in this second half, but they're both okay and able to continue. England leading 3-0 here on Talk Sport with a uh, fantastic 11-minute spell coming up the half-time in which Bellingham, Saka and Sterling all scored their first ever World Cup goals. Now Iran can bring it forward, hats the feet, trying to work it through the middle. Tarami has hardly had a kick, trying to get on the end of it, couldn't. The uh, Porto forward losing out. And it goes out of play for a throw which will be taken over on the uh, Iranian left-hand side. They're yet to progress in the group stage of the World Cup. A fair few, both Iranian fans and Qatari supporters were expecting that the Iranians would be able to get out of the group. They might yet, of course, but making a half festival they have only ever won twice in 15 matches at the world cup including the very famous win against the united states in france in 1998 and of course there will be a, a repeat of that match the final game in the group stage and that one like all of the others at the fifa world cup live you here on the talk sport network in the work it forward came beaten in the air bellingham and then rice and foot on the ball in the midfield and now it goes out to the uh, England right hand side for Bakayo Saka Saka coming in off the right hand touch line no space with which to work Trippier playing it forward now it comes back to Saka again Saka out towards the right for uh, Trippier good movement comes from Bellingham down towards the corner flag and he's got past his man he's waiting to see who he can put it back to and it was swept away by one of the centre halves and out of play for a corner but just walking his way through that Iranian penalty. Yeah, he is. He's enjoying his football at the moment. You could see that from the early minutes of the game. He wants to get on the ball. He wants to pass. And certainly, when you hit the back of the net in an England shirt, it, it, it raises your esteem. That is for sure. It's important we keep moving the ball nice and quickly. Don't get into bad habits in this second half and leave a bad taste in our mouth coming off the pitch. So a first, second half corner. Trivia with an away swinger. Out comes the goalkeeper Hussein. He didn't really get uh, anything on it. It's punched, well, flicked away by him. Declan Rice is back in there, and they'll do it all again. It's England win uh, another corner, which is their sixth of the game. Rice on the right hand side of the penalty area, and it's uh, come off him and gone out of play. So another corner, which will be uh, taken here, and Trivia going across to take it. And Sterling stands nearest the goal although Stones and Rice are both made runs past him now Rice on the edge of the six Sterling is back almost right underneath the goalkeeper and away swinger looking to create space for Maguire who came to meet him but didn't get any contact on it Shaw mops up as it's half cleared back from him to Mason Mount now to Kane Kane on the edge of the penalty area the one two between him and Mikhail Saka Saga for Trivia. Trivia rolling it down the line. Mason Mount left footed ball in from him. Goalkeeper backpedaling. It was actually a misdirected cross, but it, the goalkeeper honest. He had to make sure it wasn't going to sail over his head and into the top right hand corner. It didn't. Goes out of play. The throw will be taken over on that far side on the Iranian left. And they've taken it quickly, but not effectively. And England had enough bodies back to mop up the danger. Bellingham lays it back for Trivia. England giving it away again, but then uh, winning it back with Stones. Maguire forced to step up quickly from the defensive line and that has been something that has punctuated this game on occasion England struggling at the back but now they break forward quickly Kane playing it to Sterling who made his way forward very quickly 
And he's won another corner, the third of this second half off uh, Hossani. Yeah, once again, alarm bells ringing at the back. Just overcooking it a little bit. We want to play, we want to, but you've got to play quickly. Iran are pressing with more players and more aggressively. So if you dally on the ball or leave a short pass, they will cut it out. Brilliant play there by Sterling and Kane. Good interaction. And Raheem, when he got in advanced areas, hoping he'd get good control and uh, take on one-on-one. -on -one. But opportunity to put the ball in the box again, which uh, Luke Shaw is going to take the responsibility for this time. Uh, once more, there are six inside that box. No strong arm tactics from the uh, Iranian defenders this time. In the first quarter of the game, if you're just joining us, we thought England should have had a penalty. The Stones and Maguire both brought down. In comes the corner. Rice looking for the near post flick this time. It's cleared out towards the edge of the penalty area where there's uh, a little bit of climbing that's uh, penalised by the uh, referee. And to free kick to the Iranians on the edge of the box. It's it just slowed down a little in this second half, as you can imagine. The first half, Iran only had 46 successful passes in the entire half. Possession 80-20 in England's favour at the moment. And they lead by three goals to nil. Maguire, with the ball at his feet, midway side, his own half and his... Orange boots play forward. It's uh, cut out though easily again. Iran trying to make a, a way forward. Can't get too far. Picked up in there by Naralahi. And Safina. And we're keeping a very tight, organised shape back behind the ball. They haven't had too many opportunities to show their defensive prowess, really. The launch ball from the back by the substitute Kanani. The centre half looking to try and find the flick on. It's uh, helped on by Tarimi, but he can't find the runner. The runner here behind him. And as it's cleared long by Pickford, it's uh, mopped up at the back by Ezatalahi and put out of play. Ezatalahi, who actually made a handful of appearances for Reading a few seasons ago in the uh, Championship. Plays his club football in Denmark. The midfielder who conceded the penalty against Portugal in the last World Cup. You've got lots of experience. There's no youth in this Iranian team. There's only one in the squad who's younger than 26 and he's on the bench today. So they have the experience. A lot of them, 15 and all, have played at the World Cup before. The second best today. And I think you will find Saka here who will make his way forward towards the edge of the area. Sterling almost able to throw it through towards Mason Mount. Couldn't quite. And Iran defending mob handily were able to get it away and again in picking it up in the midfield then look long try to get uh, many Tarami in but uh, it was a handball by him and it's a free kick to England in the left back position played 58 minutes England 3 Iran then the first of three live commentaries from the World Cup for you on Talk Sport today and alongside me for this one is Stuart Pierce yeah the line up of the Iranians at the moment pushing quite hard with a tight four and uh, England if they can play through that with, with good possession the likes of Bellingham and Rice to get on it, get turned, we've got a chance to set attacks up, like the one that's being mounted now. With uh, Saka in possession, threatening it through for Drew Bellingham, edge of the penalty area. Shaw coming onto it, hit it first time, a rasping left-footed drive that was blocked, and then went high up in the air inside the penalty area. And this try he is glad to be able to knock it away and out of play for an England throw, but Shaw coming onto it. Well, have uh, taken a lot out of the way that his individual performance has gone in this first hour of the World Cup. Shaw playing it forward again. It's uh, clear by the Iranian back line, forward towards uh, Tarami. Turning it forward into the England half. And this man's covered a lot of ground to be able to get there and guide it back for Pickford in the all yellow. Play four by him. Saka going up for it. He had Hosseini stretching out a, a left leg around him to be able to clear. And England get another throw. 3 0 England leader here on Talk Sport. I think England and Gareth uh, probably. We'll be on approaching the 60 minute mark. I think before 70 minutes there'll be a multiple substitutions and hopefully get some players some minutes under their belt. Namely Phillips, I would think, would really do with the physical run out. And on top of that, maybe one or two others in those advanced areas. So Remy, back for Ezra who has had a shot from 
35 yards out maybe and you can fire that one under optimistic out of play well wide goal kick to England we've reached an arrow England are 3-0 up yeah, I'm not sure, Jim, how I, I would rate the sort of Iranian performance. They're ranked 20th in the world, but certainly, probably the way England have approached the game and, and blown them away is more of an indicator of how well England have done today rather than the Iranians. Well, they're ranked 20th in the world. It doesn't say much for a side that's ranked 120th. If uh, this is the, the 20th best team, I'm not sure about the FIFA World Rankings. I must admit, I think the ELO Rankings are... Uh, a, a, probably a better guide. They are still in the top 30. Iran within that. England, fifth in the world rankings, are twelfth in the ELO rankings. But uh, we'll go up on the, the back of this performance. Balls clear by Hosseini, the goalkeeper. Headed for easily by Shaw into Sterling. Sterling riding a challenge which comes in. is able to work it wide to the right hand side of the area. Sterling making a good run for Saka's got it. Twisting onto his left foot. Oh, and there's goal number four. It gets better and better for England. A performance that has been the oasis in the desert. It's England four, Iran now. Absolutely super play there when it gets put out to uh, Saka. He come inside, kept coming, the shot was blocked. He kept moving it and in the end the goal opened up for him. 4-0 for, now for England and I think Stevie Holland is straight out. He's pointing at one, two, three players. I think changes will be made. So 4-0 England lead. And that's the first time they score four in a World Cup opener since 1954 in the match that ended four each. I think this one is going to end in a draw. The Iranians are going to make a substitution and Tarabi is going to come on and they're going to be bringing off Eddie Tarabi. So they're bringing off their star player on the basis that the horse is bolted now and Tarabi is going to be coming on to replace him. So 4-0 England lead. Let's go back pitch side and talk to talk sports England correspondent Faye Carruthers. Southgate is going to bring three players on as you just said there Jim. Callum Wilson, Marcus Rashford and Phil Foden all stripped up and ready to come and during those celebrations the players went straight over to the substitutes to celebrate with them and Jude Bellingham booted a ball straight into the crowd of England fans to collect. Second for Bukayo Saka who has netted five for Arsenal this season. Three goals in World Cup qualification but two in the first hour or so of the tournament itself. The joint leading scorer Long way to go, go before the uh, golden boot is dished out, but he's the tie with Anna Valencia of Ecuador right now. England leading around by four goals to nils. Rice in possession inside his own half can work it forward, and England again able to get the ball into feet so ably until Saka slightly overhits the ball for Sterling. It's a adrenaline charged that one, and Iran can pick it up, and then they will bring it forward quickly. The Harameen towards the edge of the penalty area. Chance for Nuralahi to get the ball in. And his cross is knocked away by Magnificent Bellingham. Out of play for a throw, which will be taken on the uh, Iranian right. And as Faye was saying, Foden is uh, ready for action. Rashford there as well. And Wilson. And it's going to be a fourth. Grealish. Grealish has uh, also made his way forward. And to receive his final instructions. Remember, you can only make changes at three separate junctures within the game, so England will uh, bring four on at this point, or in a moment's time or so. The Iranians have it towards the corner of the penalty area, a little flick ball in, and Jordan Pickford is beaten. And Iran have one back, it was played in towards Golizade on the edge of the box, rifle, right footed right drive by Tarami. And he's got his hand to it, he's flicked it up off the underside of the bar and he's gone over the line. Harry Maguire, I think, has got a slight problem down there. He's just gestured to the uh, bench. I think he's, he's saying to the bench, before you make these four substitutions, I've got a slight problem. 
The Taranese number was up a few moments ago and he's going to be coming off and they changed their mind and they brought off the Harami instead and Tarami left on the field and he just nipped in. There's nothing Pickford could do about that, beaten by the pace of it. A delight from the uh, Iranian supporters and concern, big concern for Harry Maguire for yes. one. Uh, I think um, Decker producer there has, has just got his eyes on, on Maguire and, and potentially holding the top of his thigh potentially but certainly uh, I think he'll be one of the players coming off. I'm not sure he was down to come off certainly looking at the uh, substitute bench. In fact, they're looking at his eyes, and yeah. there's a concussion scenario right on his thigh. I was just going to say, prior to the goal, funnily enough, but um, England have certainly got enough in the front area of the pitch to cause any team a big problem and go a long way in this competition. A big question we've got, are we good enough to keep clean sheets and keep teams out? Well, they're still checking Maguire. Just going through the protocol, the uh, the medical staff are just moving fingers either side of him, just making sure where his field of vision is, just feeling his cheekbones, seeing where any potential pain is. Uh, Callum Wilson has sat back down for the time being, whilst they're just assessing exactly what the situation is with Maguire, and Eric Dyer is coming off the bench instead. There's no point in taking any risks here with Maguire. Absolutely with 25 not. minutes to go in a 4-1 lead. Absolutely not. As I say, any... Uh, at this moment in time in the match, they've earned the right to do whatever they need to do. And for me, you wouldn't even be checking him out. Bring him off, put Dyer on, give him some exposure. It's tough on uh, Wilson. He looks as though he's been the one that stood down, but I think it'll be the right move. So, uh, Maguire is coming off Faker Runners. Yeah, he certainly is. He's got his head on his hat, his hand on his head at the moment. Callum Wilson, as you say, went and sat back down, and Steve Holland had gone over just before that uh, to beckon Eric Dyer over, who's just stretching on the touchline as well and going over to greet Harry Maguire as he comes off. So this is a concern for England going forward. Maguire off. And Eric Dyer, who scored that winning penalty in the famous shootout against Colombia, had a couple of starts at the last World Cup, but came off the bench on four other occasions. And he is coming on here, Maguire being led straight down the tunnel. So England have made the one change. I think they wanted to make the triple change at the same time as well. But the referee and the assistant referees insisted that play restarted. And so... England haven't made. In fact, Dyer hasn't come on. So Maguire's been led away. The officials insisted that the game restarted, and England are still down to 10 men. They haven't been able to make the changes yet. Now they're going to be able to. It's a shambles. In fact, now they're still not going to be able to, because the referee has again told the Iranians to restart play with the resulting throw. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. And Maguire's already come off, and they're ready to bring Dyer on, and the other three that were coming on anyway. So England temporarily and uh, mystifyingly down to 10 men uh, but it will only be temporary and the next break of play Dyer's uh, going to be able to come on maybe the fourth official wasn't ready but that's hardly England's problem is it here's Declan Rice play forward and the fourth official not having a great game put the wrong number up for the, uh, the last Iranian change and on the front foot again a rerun a chance towards the edge of the penalty area it's been passed up when a right foot shot does come and it's blocked and then it's a left footed off balance effort from Nurala He which flies over the bar and it will be a goal kick which Pickford will take and now England can be restored to the full complement of 11 Tempest frayed amongst the England players because of all of that so Dyer on for Maguire and now the other three changes will be made as well I hope the fourth official's ready now. As I say, a good opportunity for Dyer. I think he's had a solid season for Spurs this year. And uh, an opportunity for him. I don't think Maguire's done a great deal wrong in this game. I think he's had a good game and, and I'm pleased for him, you know, from, from some of the stick. Um, now we've got the, the, the three advanced players, the game changers, if you like, the finishers, whatever you want to call them, have got a great opportunity to come on. Whoever's coming off has, has certainly done well and have a real good feel-good factor about themselves. So the change is made. 
Maguire off, obviously. Saka, Mount and Sterling, the other players who are making way. And they'll be replaced by Dyer, Rashford, Foden and Grealish. So Jordan Pickford will restart play England, leading by four goals to one here on Talk Sport. Long clearance from Pickford. Pickford going very long through the middle. Kane going up for it. He's been at the back. Shaw working back via a deflection to his goalkeeper. Long ball four from Pickford again. Harry Kane controlling it, working it wide out towards the right-hand touchline. A chance straight away for Rashford and he's fine. Wow! What an introduction! He's only been on the field for a minute and Marcus Rashford has scored! His first World Cup goal, a moment that he will cherish and never forget. And you remember England's last game at a major tournament where Saka and Rashford missed those penalties and were the subject of disgraceful racial abuse by an element of England supporters and now back on the World Cup stage they score three between them and England have five and three points to boot. I think what we're seeing Jim is the strength in depth of the England squad you know to take three players in advanced areas off and bring three on that any given day could be your starting three takes some doing it's quite incredible really and uh, fantastic goal for Rashford been on good form for United this back end of the uh, leading into the World Cup and uh, there's some great substitution from the manager well done well, it's amazing how things work. His last touch in an England shirt was that missed penalty in the final of the Euros. Hasn't played for his country since then. Didn't feature in the Nations League or any of the qualifiers after the Euros. And he comes back on. His first contribution played in, scores, and England lead by five goals to one. Here's Sean. Way back for Eric Dyer on the left of two centre halves now alongside John Stones. Trippier on the right, Rice and Bellingham in midfield, Mount ahead of them, Rashford on the right at the front three with Kane in the middle and Grealish on the left. So England are now that the changes have been made. In the leading 5 1. Sure. Back for Eric Dyer again. For the start of the career on Callum Wilson's face, he is going to be uh, coming on in a moment. That'll be, well, I would imagine England's last change. I haven't had clarification yet whether the, the Maguire substitution was a concussion substitution, in which case England will be able to make one more. He certainly looked it, didn't he? They were going for all the concussion protocol by the looks of things. Wilson's point of view, it's good that he's got the opportunity to get on, I think, from Harry Kane's point of view, or from a selfish point of view, on behalf of Harry Kane, it's nice to see him come off. He's done his football, a couple of assists today and been part of it. Short, back for Bellingham. Bellingham hitting a, a longer ball out towards the England right-hand side, where Trippi is going to try and get there ahead of uh, Hans Safi. Rashford making life difficult as well. The Iranians clear up the uh, left hand touchline. Ezra Tullahi on the uh, edge of his own penalty area. Neat and tidy working it through the midfield. And then a little bit of a wrestling match going on. The referee lets it go. And it looks as though it's going to break England's way towards the edge of the penalty area. But it's a smack clear again. Bellingham was the England player involved in that. So a little word being exchanged between uh, him and his uh, opponent. Morala here on the back of that. And England will be able to build from the back once more. Leading by five goals to one. Rashford only on the pitch. 52 seconds, incidentally, when he uh, put the ball in the net. And uh, Callum Wilson will be hoping to make a similarly instant impact. He will come on now for Harry Kane, who's scored in every group game in the last World Cup. Uh, a duck for him tonight, but five goals elsewhere. Job done. As far as uh, Kane is concerned, he'll lead the field, and Wilson will come on to replace him. Yeah, good to see Callum Wilson. He's had a good season for, for Newcastle. Newcastle 
on an upturn at this moment in time and he's played a big part in that and uh, it wouldn't surprise you if he netted as well in this uh, 15 minutes or so that we've got left. So a tournament debut for Callum Wilson, who hasn't played for England at all since he was a substitute in a 6-0 win against Bulgaria back in 2019, more than three years ago. Wilson, McCain, and Asmoon is going to be coming on for a round of the next break in play. Asmoon, the third most prolific Iranian international goal scorer of all time who tore a calf muscle back in early October and hasn't played at all since by a Leverkusen striker who's far from fully fit hardly did anything in open training for Iran over the, uh, the last two, three days or so but he's going to be coming on in a moment Eric Dyer's in possession he's laid it to his right hand side where England are going to be able to work it forward Easily again with Stones to Trippier to Declan Rice down to the England left. Shaw to Grealish. Big applause for Harry Kane, you can hear, who went off on the far touchline and is just slowly walking round behind the goal and uh, acknowledging the applause of the England supporters. Taramee on the right hand side of the penalty area played in. Dyer was with him and the angle was prohibitive. He snatched it a little bit and sent it high and wide at Pickford's goal. Nuralahi coming off, Asmoon coming on for Iran, who trail by five goals to one on Torsport. Yeah, and as I say, I'm sure the coaching staff will be absolutely delighted with his performance, and certainly, more importantly, first game of any big tournament with the nerves and whatever that come with that. Um, England just hit the ground running, very, very comfortable in possession of the ball, and when you look, it's hardly surprising when you look back over the last two tournaments this is a team that are very comfortable at the back end of tournaments Marcus Rashford uh, just getting another touch there the uh, first player to come on and score for England in the World Cup since Steven Gerrard managed it against Sweden back in 2006 and this is only the second time England have scored five or more in a major tournament and following that 6-1 against Panama in 2018 England bring it forward, still plenty of time to add to the five, 13 minutes to go, Foden on the half turn, worked to his right hand side for Rashford, Foden again, over on the right flank, turning, coming into a much more central position with the ball never more than a foot away from his uh, left foot, finding Grealish, Foden's club teammate, Grealish and takes it back, towards the right hand side again a chance to flick a ball in it was a misdelivered cross by Marcus Rashford got the angle wrong slight miss hit Bellingham does well to stretch out a right leg in midfield and bring it back under control Foden into the feet of Grealish again Foden trying to squeeze it through towards Luke Shaw a thin gap between two Iranian midfielders and the fire deflection he found his man Shaw then is uh, just caught in possession by the Harami on the near touchline that goes out of play for a throw that'll be taken on the Indian left. Just wondering if the, uh, the tunnel is loud enough for you, Stuart, here. Whether you're hearing it back home, even if you're not listening on the radio, I would imagine you probably are. It's definitely, isn't it? Here's Rashford once more. Rashford to Rice. Rice to Maguire. Uh, to Stones, I beg your pardon. Maguire going off injured a few minutes ago. Stones down to Luke Shaw again. Shaw's got Grealish in possession right in front of the uh, big wide England technical area and Grealish just slowing it down and then quick injection of tempo plays it back towards halfway works out towards the uh, right Trippier applauding the intent of the pass if not the execution from Stones he missed it and it's uh, gone out of play for a throw that will be taken on the Iranian left but this is going to go down as a really good start for England's World Cup campaign they lead 5-1 with 10 minutes to go yeah it's been solid performance it's important that we see it out over the line and make sure we keep putting pressure on the Iranians keep possession of the ball we don't need to kill ourselves physically but keep moving the ball nice and quickly let the ball do the work as they say well I wonder how Ali McCoy is enjoying this 
Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. Uh, together, he's with Laura Woods here in uh, Qatar on the uh, Talksport breakfast between six and ten. Uh, Woodsy and Koisty and Gabby Agbon Lahore with them as well tomorrow morning. The former England striker with his views off the uh, back of this opening today. They'll be followed as always by White and Jordan with Jim and Simon also live from our Talksport studio here in Qatar. Then three back-to-back -back games for you tomorrow. Denmark, Tunisia from one. Mexico, Poland at four. France against the Aussies at seven. Argentina kick off their campaign tomorrow morning live on Talksport 2. That's a 10 o'clock kickoff back home. Now those are the ones that are going to be hot. The uh, the 10 o'clock in the morning games back home. The others are, are all going to be fine. No problem with the uh, the conditions here. Not strength sapping at all as far as the England players are concerned as they've shown and it won't be later for Wales match against the United States which is the other game in this group that kicks off at 7 p.m. tonight uh, between now and then we'll have an hour's worth of reaction from in the stadium you're not missing anything incidentally because uh, Milad Maharami is uh, down receiving treatment the uh, Iranian left back uh, between full time in this game and uh, about four o'clock or so your time uh, we'll be getting reaction from Gareth Southgate, from the headline makers, so chewing the fat, looking at where everything's gone right, where the fine-tuning still uh, needs to be made from an England perspective, uh, with Adrian and Stuart and Faker others, our England correspondent, uh, speaking to uh, the men that matter. Then, drive, Goldstein and Bent, a couple of hours of more England reaction, you on the phones, your thoughts on where everything has gone right for England today and what you feel still needs to be improved and Senegal against the Netherlands which kicks off at four is also live for you here on Talk Sport 2 so Senegal against the Dutch coming your way the middle game today Nama Harami has uh, finished receiving his treatment he's back on his feet we're back underway we have 14 added minutes at the end of the first half it's not going to be as long as that at the end of the second, but a fair few you would imagine as well. England leading 5-1, and they've got the ball at their feet in the midfield with Bellingham. Bellingham trying to work it out towards uh, the right for uh, Trippier, but it's easily knocked away. As Moon gives chase up the inside right channel, but uh, an optimistic crossfield ball can't find him. And in fact, As Moon uh, just pulled up for a moment there, but he's I think, just adjusting his right boot. Nothing serious from uh, his perspective. I'm not sure they're going to be able to get him fit to face the Welsh, which is uh, Iran's next game, which kicks off live on TalkSport 1 o'clock Friday. Uh, England in action 7 o'clock Friday against the United States. Both of those games for you on TalkSport in, what, four days' time. It's going to be a, a good four days for England, you would imagine, on the back of this. Rashford, score of the fifth. Out to Stones. Play back by Rice. And Bellingham lays it off to the England left-hand side for Eric Dyer to work forward. And now Foden has got Grealish to his left-hand side. He's tried the more optimistic ball through the middle. And Rashford will sprint after it and will get there. But wider than Foden intended. He's got past the first one. He's got past the second one. Right footy shot. Uh, left footy shot, I beg your pardon, was blocked. And Grealish trying to get on the pieces on the edge of the box. He's done really well to recycle it. He's found Shaw. Foden shipping it back into Shaw's run. Uh, Wilson was in there lurking with intent as well and eventually it's cleared now to play for another England corner. We, we've just seen a phase of play which shows England at their very best, playing at a real high tempo, quick interaction. I think when Rashford ended up beating a, an Iranian defender, he was trying to flick it round the corner to his teammate who'd overlapped and managed to beat the Iranian just by flicking it and getting it wrong, to be quite honest with you. Um, but when England really step the tempo up, they are an exciting outfit. Shaw taking the corner, very deep, too deep for everybody that was in there in an England shirt. And play stops immediately, the uh, referee seeing some bumping and barging going on. There's concern for another Iranian defender who's down, holding his head. Uh, John Stones leaning over him to make sure he's alright. He knew how severe the contact was. I think Kanani appreciated Stones' efforts there. There's two men genuinely jumping for the same ball. The free kick's gone against Stones, though. It's a free kick which will be taken by Iran. Six minutes to go, and England leading by five goals to one. Yeah, it, certainly a, a good afternoon stroke evening's work from England's point of view. These first games can always be very tricky, especially when you play teams that bank up and defend, but we've cut them open when we've had to. Look to threat again from set plays, especially corners. 
and uh, when they have uh, had opportunities we've managed to certainly and I include Declan Rice as a key figure in this managed to stop attacks and Bellingham's done his part as well here is uh, Jude Bellingham England's youngest ever debut top scorer at a World Cup now Rashford working it wide out to the uh, right hand side of the area for Wilson and the sliding challenge puts it away Rashford's gone and retimed 49 seconds after he came on the field the third quickest by a substitute in World Cup history well, it's been a day of milestones and to put things in perspective people might say well okay it's only Iran as we mentioned 20th in the world rankings this their biggest defeat for 15 years here's Grealish if it stays as a four goal margin of victory for England that is Bellingham played out to the England right again good movement off the ball coming from Phil Foden what a, an impact sub to be able to bring on Foden laying it back for Grealish who's a, another in that category back it goes from him to Trippier Foden making a good run off the ball play down the right hand side of the penalty area a little layoff Rashford couldn't ride the challenge effectively came under Luke Shaw's right foot and he really didn't fancy a shot with it and England have had possession turned over and a chance for Estelani to bring it forward and it's three against four for a moment as Iran finally get the red shirts in England's final third but can't find a way past the impressive Trippier who blocks it and it goes out of play Trippier now the captain's armband incidentally now that Kane has gone off and he's uh, in there again with another good foot in finding Rashford Wilson chasing and might get on the end of a poorly under hit back pass but the substitute goalkeeper was out quickly Hosseini sweeping it away and it goes out for a throw that will be taken on the England right hand side three and a half to go England five Iran one on talk sport what was that again Jim sorry I misheard you Score England away. five Iran one thank you it's good it? and it is good yeah. it's good to hear and I think both teams at this stage will be quite happy for the final whistle England's work done good result three points in the bag we move on to the next game and uh, the Iranians certainly they thought this would be the toughest game on paper and that certainly panned out that way Luke Shaw playing it for and uh, that's over here I heard Graham soon as uh, but talking uh, before they joined us here in the stadium he was on with White and Jordan and he was saying you're playing against a team who are significantly below England in the world rankings they think it's going to be tough don't disappoint them and, and that has often been the case in, in the past of major tournaments this actually the kind of game that England have struggled playing against sides who are of a defensive nature who are ranked in and around sort of 2030 in the world rankings it's a side that play defensively but do it very well and that's a side that England have historically struggled against well no struggles here well and I think we've cut them open today you know Bellingham and Saka and so many interchange of play in the front five if you like uh, has been absolutely outstanding and that's been the strength the only thing that I'm always thinking is further down the tournament can we defend as a team strongly enough to make sure that we get past some of the more leading lights at this World Cup that's the important one and that'll be something that you'll be talking to Adrian about in the, uh, the final hour of the program from in the stadium today here at uh, the Khalifa International Stadium in Al Rayyan as uh, Shaw plays the ball through the midfield for Jack Grealish and England will bring it forward again with uh, 90 seconds of normal time to go and a 5-1 lead just that there has been the, the odd sign of, uh, of defensive issues just now and then uh, which has uh, been a concern a possession for, for this tournament incidentally the official stats you may well be away you might have seen them on the television they have three numbers now rather than two they have the time that both sides have been in control of the ball and also what they call in contest which has been when it's sort of been uh, going backwards and forwards in the midfield and it's 70 percent england and it could be six in a moment because they're on the front foot again an opportunity to draw the ball back for Grealish half a dozen for England on a fantastic night Jack Grealish adds to the tally and England are going to repeat their margin of victory over Panama four years ago Grealish tapping in after more selfless work it's England six in round one
this. Oh, yes, I think, yeah, definitely onside there. And he timed his run fantastically well, Callum Wilson. And credit to him, I thought he was a definite to shoot when you've just come on unselfishly, just rolled one back and said, there you go, there's a goal for you in an empty net. Credit to him, brilliant play, Callum Wilson. Now well put away by Jack Grealish as well, just walking on to him, tapping it in. He scored his first goal in Andorra. And scores his second for his country in Qatar in the World Cup. England six, Iran one. And he's done the fantastic celebration. I don't know whether you saw, prior to Manchester City's last Premier League games, we go to 10 minutes of added time. Prior to Manchester City's last Premier League game, he uh, spoke to uh, a young City fan who suffers from muscular dystrophy and he promised him that he would celebrate the next goal that he scored. He was asked by this young fan, can you do the worm? And he said, well, I'm, I'm not going to do that, but I will do a special dance for you. And he hasn't let him down. Good to see. Uh, Jack Grealish is uh, a fine young fella and has tapped the ball in there. And that's a goal that we'll see him absolutely made up scoring in the World Cup. But he had the presence of mind to honour that promise and it's just made a young boy's life. I think as well, uh, it's, it's a side of his game that we want to probably see a little bit more. More goals and more assists from Jack Grealish, certainly in an England shirt. I remember the last game I saw that had 24 added minutes, 14 in the first and 10 in the second, but we're in one now, 6-1 England lead, and the ball will be worked out to the three Lions right again, as Declan Rice tries to flick it around the corner and wins a throw. England in possession in the uh, midfield, Luke Shaw coming to meet it. Uh, the goal difference could be so important at the end, this is a good result as far as Wales and the States are concerned as well. If you if you ended up, say, getting a, a three-way tie, three teams on three points maybe, or a, a couple of teams on four, if Iran win one and draw one of the next two, uh, goal difference taking a battering here, and if England end up level on points with uh, somebody, they've got a big advantage. It could be worth half a point to somebody, this is Foden. He goes back for Eric Dyer. Dyer to Rice, and then Back towards Stones again, Stones to Trippier. Uh, it's just a, a keep ball exercise for England now in the minutes that remain, Stuart. I know that, um, I think this result and the magnitude of this result for England, I think the game we've got coming up later, the, the Wales-USA game, is absolutely massive for both nations. And it, I think if Wales can get a victory in that game, that will really do, do their chances of, of uh, progressing in this tournament massively. Almost see it as a playoff to see which team's coming through. Oh, that's brilliant from Foden. He had three around him and he just looked, almost looked them all in the eye and then just put the ball somewhere completely different. Danced between the three of them, rode another challenge and laid it off and got England going on the front foot again. That United States-Wales game, remember, kicks off at seven. It's live on Talk Sport. Good jump. On the England left-hand side by Rashford, kept in by Grealish, score of England, six goal. Back it goes again for Jude Bellingham, Bellingham curving it in and it's just too high for Wilson and didn't quite evade the goalkeeper who came out. And it remains 6-1 with, what, seven minutes or so to go. Ball thrown four by Hosseini, put down by uh, Tarabi. No positives really as far as the uh, Iranians are concerned, they'll take out of this, but Wales will be greatly infused by what they've seen. The only thing you'd say, Carlos Queiroz's men can't, simply can't be as bad as this again. That's not taking anything away from England's performance, but I think there, there is a reality that not only have England been very good, Iran have been decidedly average. Yeah, yeah, that would be fair to say. I, I think we stole their hearts in the first half, and I'm being honest with you, Jim, I think our football's been that good. And when we've played at a real uh, high tempo, little interchange, give and goes, the, the front line of our team has, has been absolutely scintillating. Dyer. Now 
forward towards Declan Rice. The England fans in a very good voice. Rice laying it out to England's right hand side again. More movement off the ball came from Foden as they just try to chip it over the top. Marcus Rashford to find him. Grealish just on the half turn. And now out towards Luke Shaw. Shaw goes back for Bellingham. Bellingham to Rice. And back for Eric Dyer. We're in 15. Now John Stones. Like Jordan Pickford starting a 15th successive tournament game for England today. And they're going to get another win. Pickford controlling it. Laying it outside the penalty area. Is Trippier. Put forward right footed. Helped round the corner. Coming to meet it was uh, Callum Wilson just uh, dropping off. Rowan Ganji was in there to smuggle possession back. Now Kanani. Right for the ball. Played by the centre half out to the left wing. Harami line deep ball inside the penalty area. Didn't miss Taremi by much. It will come down on the right hand side of the penalty area. Another chance to deliver. As Moon dropping off. Can't get there. It's headed away from him. And England in getting it clear might be able to launch another counter attack with Foden. Some of the Iranians suffering from cramp. Oh, Foden's ball. Phil Wilson was overhit and uncharacteristically so and it just goes innocuously through the goalkeeper Hossein. Yeah, you expect much more from Foden. Um, really poor pass. Wilson offering himself and running behind the back line. To be honest with you, the, the pass was probably never on. That's Moon. Into space on the right hand side. Harami. He can deliver in towards the near post. Look down easily enough and Eric Dyer will do the rest. Just taps it out of the penalty area to find Jack Grealish and Grealish still with uh, good injection of pace he's not been on the field that long Jack Grealish and it was uh, a turn that was far too good for Karali Ganji who's fouled him and given away a free kick which uh, England will take on the edge of the centre surface England 6 he ran 1 on the talk sport yeah as I say it's difficult there'll be a lot of people looking at a lot of superlatives with the result and everything that goes with it but it's a long way to go in this tournament and uh, the people that would be aware of that is uh, the England manager and the England coaching staff I'm sure never read too much into the lows never get too excited by the highs that will certainly be something that will stand England in good stead after this because if you're a player and you've scored six in the World Cup again it's understandable I suppose that things in mind might just that race a little but feet will very much be kept on the ground you can be assured of that I think the importance of today as well the players look fresh don't they I, I think they do you know there's been a bit of talk about oh, they, a week ago they'd finished their season if you like and the turnaround of time this team look as though they're used to each other's company they enjoy each other's company and the know-how between them the movement the interaction it, it looks very in sync England take a throw over on the far touch line, which is their right hand side, midway inside their own half. Now an opportunity potentially for Asmoon, and Pickford sticks it under the bar. Oh, it could have been 6 2, it probably should have been 6 2, but it's an outstanding piece of goalkeeping from Jordan Pickford. Which is England switching off, possession turned over, Asmoon was through, left hand side of the penalty area, got within about nine yards of goal opened up his body and Pickford has instinctively stuck up a right hand and got a finger to it a tip it under the bar it's a brilliant save it is a brilliant save but as I say England have got to make sure when we come up against tougher opponents you cannot let people in behind your back line as easily as we uh, showed you see and the defence that has been breached at once and uh, but for some Pickford brilliance he would have been breached a second time there as well Jim when people talk about why did we play two defensive players in front of the back line all of those type of things I think it's important to discuss that after the game today and uh, going forward so a free kick for Iran where about 90 seconds away from full time and it's going to be a left of an in swinger from out by the right hand touch line England have got two in a wall Ganji in has Safi, in fact it was with the delivery in the end and then all good goalkeeping punching it away uh, an Iranian player ending up 
just sitting down inside the six yard box and angry reaction three England players turned I don't know whether something was said but three England players turned and looked at him and there was uh, quite a heated conversation just for a moment there he just wanted I think he wanted a penalty for, for Bullion and obviously sure did you not see what happened in the first three minutes of the game it was a bit non-plussed with that England, if you're just joining us, we felt should have had a penalty for both Maguire and Stones being wrestled to the ground as England had the first corner. Uh, nothing was given. This is being looked at, though, by the uh, VAR. Leonan Gonzalez, the Uruguayan official. Now, we talked when the first one wasn't given about the need for consistency. And we haven't seen a replay as yet, but I can't imagine that there was anything... Oh, he's going to give it. He's going to come over to the monitor and have a look. Now... There is a clear need for consistency. We saw the Stones and Maguire one inside the opening three minutes of the game. This has clearly got to be worse than that for this to be given, you would think. And whether it will be or not, we haven't seen a replay as yet. But the Brazilian referee has raced over to the uh, monitor uh, to uh, have a look at this. It's just a ball that swung inside the penalty area. And they're saying it's a pull of the shirt by Shaw or Stones, there is Stone stuff, pull the shirt, the Iranian player gets sandwiched in between Stones and Shaw, and that's nothing like what happened in the, the opening stages of the game, which was much more of a penalty than this, I think if the original incident hadn't happened in the game, you could say, well, I, I can see possibly that, that would be given, but there is no consistency if this is given as a penalty. No, to, to be fair, this is a 2 out of 10 for a penalty. Maguire's was an 8 out of 10. He's given it. Penalty to Iran. Just makes a mockery of VAR, to be quite honest with you, Jim. Well, that is extraordinary. That is... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. I just don't understand how that can be given when the, the one so early in the game wasn't. He made the run in between Shaw and Stones. There was a pull of the shirt. Stones had his hand on the shirt. There's no contesting that. But uh, that will be talked about. England will not be happy with that. It is only going to be an academic footnote in the game. But it's a chance for Jordan Pickford to have another moment that will enhance his World Cup catalogue. It's going to be Taremi against Pickford with an opportunity to give Iran a second goal right at the end of the game. Pickford bobbing up and down on his line, planning all the yellow, just turns and spits over his left shoulder. Taremi standing motionless. It's a straight run up towards the ball. He stands on the edge of the penalty area. The whistle has blown. He's been told to get on with it by the referee. And now, finally, he gets into his stride and comes up and hits it right footed. And he sent Pickford the wrong way. No celebrations from the Iranian players. Tereni receives the ball as it ricochets back off the net. There is no penalty save for Jordan Pickford. It's a controversial award of a spot kick in the first place. And it means that this is going to end. England 6 Iran 2. I've got to say, I've managed teams going into tournaments and we have these referee meetings where they say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And you don't expect within the first 90 minutes of the second game that all of their directive goes out the window. It's absolutely ridiculous, to be quite honest with you. And Gareth's not happy, been over to the fourth official, and I think the game's over. It was a terrain penalty with the last kick of the game, and it's meant that England have beaten Iran by six goals to two. Gareth Southgate and Carlos Queiroz in place. That will just have sour things a little bit as far as England are concerned because they will feel the injustice of it. But the bigger picture is that it's a night in which England coming into the game on the back of six without a win have scored six. Two Mediterranean goals in the second half might have taken a little bit of the gloss off it. It is underlined that there is still room for improvement. But this has been a great night for England. Off to a winning start in the World Cup again, as they were four years ago when they needed a stoppage time winner from Harry Kane. They got the job done in the first half tonight. Bellingham, Saka, 
scoring twice, Sterling, Rashford and Grealish all on the score sheet. A wonderful England performance that has laid the foundation for the 2022 World Cup campaign. It's finished. England 6, Iran 2.